we're gonna chirp about it every Tuesday night about what's right. We're gonna chirp about it. Oh yeah! <laughs> I'll tell you. Yep, chirp about it. It is, man. You get creative all the time. Uh, every every week you new. get creative. I love it. Well, good evening, New York City. Greetings to the world. You're tuned in to Chirp About It Live. I am your host, Pat Sainville, along with Ian Bamberger. Thank you, sir. That great intro was by Mr. Ian Bamberger. Hope you guys are having a great, uh, wonderful evening, a holiday evening, I should say. Uh, we're broadcasting on the City World Radio Network in the great city of Manhattan. Great city. It's beautiful outside, and I'm just in a spectacular mood. I just love it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh hell yeah, man. I love that positivity. Yeah. Bringing it to the show, oh, bringing yeah. it to life. Oh, yeah. I'm just happy. I carry that all the time. Happy! Oh, yeah. Well, folks, we have a uh, spectacular show for you, as usual. We have special guest who uh, was running a, a little bit behind. He goes by the name of Gabe uh, Stoddard. He's a uh, stand-up comedian. So uh, sit tight. You know, we're going to, you're going to hear a lot from uh, Gabe in just a little bit once he comes in. Ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're going to have a good time. I love it. All right. Well, I'll just, uh, you know, of course, do my uh, local topics, and then um, we'll do our round of trips. What do you say, Ian that Bamberger? sounds good to me, Mr. Right. Sainville. Yep, 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 yep. Also, we cannot forget Jade, who keeps things together here at the station. We love Jade for sure. She really keeps us together here. I have to say, I mean, we couldn't do it on our own, huh, Ian? We're busy on the mics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell yeah, Pat. There's life right? to talk about. Man. Oh, yeah. Well, happy holidays again to everyone. I know. Is Hanukkah, Hanukkah just, over? Just, uh, just what, finished. Sunday. On yeah. Sunday. Well, I mean, well, happy Hanukkah. Are you Jewish? Uh, well, you know, some people call me the black Jew, you know? The black Jew. <laughs> well, mo- you know That's what? I, honestly, I think 60, 65% of my friends are, are Jewish. Wow. Yeah, my crew, in fact. People are guys I hang out with every weekend and huh. friends, friends, yeah. Cool. So what do you say? I think, yeah. Well, and for nice you, you, of course. So, yeah, I'm a black huh? Jew. A black you know, Jew. I'm a human. I love everyone. Yeah, exactly. I am everyone. Exactly. You know. you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I so you, the man. holidays are upon us. Uh, I got to tell you, man, I went uh, ice skating for the very first time in my entire life. And uh, I was at uh, Bryant Park. And let me tell you, man. In Manhattan, right? Is that in Manhattan. It? Yep, oh, I, Midtown I, I Manhattan. An and let me tell you, yeah, yeah. I feel, well, I felt. You know, for two days, as if uh, I was just, I fell off the uh, the Empire State Building. <laughs> you fell down a lot? Oh, yeah. Well, because I've never ice skated, and I don't, you know, I don't exercise. So every bone in my body the day yeah. after was aching. I mean, like, seriously, Ian. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I thought I had to go to the emergency room. You tell me you don't exercise? My, I do not exercise. No. Nope. What? No. Nah, well, you know, I guess dancing uh, counts, okay, and okay, and dance. walking. I do a lot of walking. Okay. You know, this okay. is New York City, so York City, it's a, I do walk. a lot of a lot of walking and running up and down the uh, subway stations, mm-hmm. in and out and out and out and so on. So I do that. I guess that keeps me, you know, pretty, uh, you know, in good shape. You know. Plus, I eat well. So the first time. Yeah. Ice skating. First time ice skating, and I'll tell you, I don't know if I'd do it again. <laughs> okay. Now, what, was, it this, was, uh, was this a date? Was this, what was it? No, it was just more of a, it was just me and uh, and uh, and a friend, yeah. you know. She's very good. You know, she's really, really good. Like um, Tanya Harding good? Yeah, she's really good. Okay. She's really, really good. And uh, so, you know, she convinced me, let's do it. You know, it's a holiday. I said, all right, you know what? Let's do it. Um, but again, I, I don't think I'd do it again. Okay. <laughs> I don't, man. So, so painful. I, I swear to God. <laughs> in a long time. You know, Do you ice skate? So I have ice skated, but this brings me up to a story. Uh, I was in uh, Brooklyn as a dog walker, so I travel all through the city. Yeah. You know, I bike around, and uh, I was walking through this park with this amazing beagle, and during in this grassy knoll, there was a, an older gentleman yeah. you know, on his bike, Yeah. and he kept falling over and everything. He just hops on, <laughs> starts the bike, and I come over to him like, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? He's like, Literally, this you know, I'm I'm learning how to ride my ride bike. A, really? Yeah. This is a grown man. This is a grown man, and yeah, I was like, listen, "Good time, job!" Like you know, you're gonna have everything. to fall as if I'm like a coach to, first <laughs> to bike. Time, I know. Huh? <laughs> That's first so time much for respect, everything. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Ice skating is no joke, man. I tell you, Same it's scary, thing. scary. Same thing. I think it's actually scarier than riding a bike. First time riding a bike. I, I think. I think. Yeah. I mean, riding a bike yeah, is more universal. You know, than I'm afraid. You know, I'm scared. I'm on the ground, and I'm I'm like. Afraid that someone's gonna roll over my fingers. I mean, it's just horrible. Cut I won't do it fingers. again. I won't do. It. Then it was freezing. You know. Yeah. Then I had the sniffles. I was just a horrible. What day was uh, this? This was Saturday. Saturday was cold. Yeah, yeah, it was cold. 
But, you know, I did it. Hey, listen, I did it, so I just wanted to mention that. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, also, um, you know, this police officer, uh, a police officer, um, uh, Amir uh, Pali, who was released today uh, from the hospital over the weekend on Sunday. He was shot uh, by a friendly uh, fire. His partner actually shot him. Oh. Uh, there was some kind of... Um, some really big issue with this man in, on Staten Island swinging a knife at the officers. So, yeah. through, uh, you know, shots were fired and, you know, uh, and they this hit officer, another officer. Yeah, his partner's bullet uh, hit him, you know, in the ab- abdomen. So, first so, thing that comes into my mind is this officer who got shot is trying to apprehend the suspect. Correct. And then other people start to open fire. Well, his partner. His partner. They well, actually fired both. when his, yeah. his partner's. Trying to yeah, take a man down, it's crazy. I mean, I, well, I tasered not, him. The taser didn't work. I mean, it was just this back and forth thing. Well, you know, I'm just so happy that this officer is out of the hospital, um, just in time for the holiday to spend it with his family. So, yeah. you know, these police officers, man, I tell you, they they just put themselves in in harm's way. I say it all the time. I know they get a bad rap, a bad rap. You know, it's tough with media. Um, you know, you see terrible stories, but some of them, the you know, part, I don't trust some of them. You know, but yeah. uh, you know, at the same point in time, these guys they really put themselves in harm's way. You know, because well, they, they were they responded to a call. You know, and this guy uh, apparently was intoxicated, mm-hmm. and um, you know, he launched at the officer with a, uh, a huge, with a, a huge knife. Yeah, I have so. to say, and I, I'm in support of cops. Yeah, you know, but you sign up for it. Why did you sign up to be an officer? Good question. You know, good question. You know, I guess you're you given know. the responsibility to hold a firearm and, uh, you know, be the judge of how you use it. Yeah. Speaking of officers, uh, another disturbing uh, video I saw. Maybe you all uh, heard about this uh, on Friday. This young lady who went to was at a welfare office in, in Brooklyn and she had a one year old child yanked out of her, her hands or her arms. By like a dozen officers. I saw the headline, but I mean, what a crazy, crazy! Vi- I mean, so disturbing. It was a two-minute video. I I couldn't even stomach it, man. Forty seconds in, I said, you know, I'm shutting this. Down I haven't off. seen the video. What, what, what's the context here? Um, well, she was at a welfare office with her you know, one-year-old son. She took some time off from work because they cut off her, her their help or whatever she's getting for her son. <laughs> so uh, she waited for about four hours. Um, welcome, Gabe. By the way, folks, our uh, guest is in the house. Gabe Stoddard in the house. Hey. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you? It's Syrian. All right, good. So we're just going over some local topics here. I don't know if you heard about this I disturbing did, yeah. video. So she sat on the floor with the son, and then I guess the security guard, feel, into, you know, uh, feel free to uh, you know, uh, chime in. Or yep. chirp about it, chirp in, sure. uh, Gabe. Oh, yeah. And uh, security guard, I guess, asked her to get up, and she refused to. Some, you know, words went, you know, uh, fly, flew back and forth. Right. And then it really escalated to the police. He called the cops, and then the police got involved, and then they tried to take this child away from his mom. It was Am a I lot right? of cops. I got like yeah. four or five in there. I thought it was about twelve. Yeah, it was for crazy. a mother and a baby. A mom yeah. and a baby, a one-year-old. And d- you got to see this video. So it went viral right, right. away. Right. Uh, so she was arrested, mm-hmm. um, held without bail. But uh, today, uh, through pressure, uh, Brooklyn DA uh, Eric uh, Gomez um, released her. Right. Uh, with uh, no charges being. So uh, she's been in jail for several. Sent, for they sent her to Rikers Island. This temporarily really? sent her to Rikers. <laughs> temporarily, yeah. And what was her crime again? Well, I mean, they say. There was something with the credit card. Someone yeah, she was she in a car a warrant, with. She had a warrant in uh, New Jersey. She was a third party to a uh, credit card fraud, something okay. like that. Yeah. But they dropped that, you know, in light of all this, like, of course. terrible injustice. I mean, everyone, I mean it's horrible. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you, you got to see this video. It's just The horrible. video is terrifying. It's terrifying. Yeah, I gotta and see. you got to see one of these officers. He's yanking. It's the, the, the That guy should be, lo- I think he should lose a, his it job. Was a, it was a woman. No, it was a, fa- it was a male, a, fe- a male officer. At one point, he started yanking the child out of him. Jumping his, up I mean, and like down, trying to yanking yeah. him out, and, I, and I'm just like, "What the hell is going on here?" Yeah, that's it's not like he's doing pretty, a plumbing job. It's pretty disturbing. Know? That's what exactly what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, you know, he's going to get paid leave for like. Well, they a put week. them on uh, desk. Uh, I don't know, like the desk, desk duty, desk, and uh, desk duty, or whatever, back. until they right, uh, whatever investigate they it. That's really sad, yeah, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, sometimes, you know, uh, I'd like to play weight out on both on both sides. Yeah. Maybe this young lady probably provoked it uh, slightly. 
and I wasn't there. I don't know. But my thing is, you know, if someone asks you to do something, I mean, you know, I suspect she probably just went after the security guard mm-hmm. and then it, it escalated. Mm-hmm. And, you know, these officers should be trained not to, you know, to de-escalate uh, the situation. Right. See, they went in full force and just they just caused havoc. You know, they should have, you know, paused and, you know, just maybe one or two just have a discussion with this young lady. Right, and right. Didn't, But they just came in full force ready to, uh, like, wrestling on that match. Yeah, well, the same <laughs> one that was trying to really yank the kid ended up taking out the taser gun and everything, yes. pointing at people after the crowd got too crazy and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Really on a trip. Training, uh, man. Pointing training. at the baby, too? Everyone. Not so much the baby, but the baby was there. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. you know he could get hit. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that just goes on. to tell you about training of these officers. I mean, I know, you know, uh, the commissioner, he stresses, you know, training for these officers. But, you know, more needs to has to be done because, yeah, you know, their job is to de-escalate these situations, not, you know, not help, you know, fuel them, mm-hmm. you know, especially with a child. I mean, look, you can see here, Ian, with a child in the middle of, of everything. There we go. Jade is pulled it up. Right That's there? the That's video. video yeah. Watch this. You don't see this officer. Yeah, look, look okay. at that. It's like he's doing a plumbing job. Look at this. Look at this. Amazing, and he's pulling on a child. Yeah, pulling on a kid, a one year old. Destroy oh. like tendons and. Oh well, you know, I I, I think I think lawsuit is coming. That's what <laughs> that's what I think. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I think all right. Well, uh, we're just gonna move off on that. Yeah, that, but like that. someone like that could be on the force after that. Like you could just manhandle. Well, now there's an investigation. It's crazy. It's all over the headlines. Crazy. Um, you know, I spoke about uh, this uh, fearless uh, uh, little girl again. She won't be taking any more bulls. She's officially uh, facing the New York Stock Exchange. This is the uh, young fearless girl, the little statue who's yeah. facing the bull. Right. So as of yesterday, she's officially uh, in her new home. Uh, facing the uh, the New York Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. so no more bull cool. for her. <laughs> no, <laughs> no more bullshit. Cool. <laughs> you know, facing the bull, whatever. Are they still uh, going to move the bull? Yeah, you know that's. I mentioned that last last week. Uh, this this there's uh, you know there's discussion about that. I'm right. not sure what whether they're they going to where. do it yet, yeah. but um, that's that's the discussion. Right. That'd be that sucks though. You know, growing up, that bull has been around for almost thirty years, if not more. Right. Down in the um, Bowling long. Green, and yeah. to move it. I know. You know, it's an icon. I mean, yeah. Uh, what's the reason they're moving it? Well, you know, uh, the uh, the uh, the little square that uh, where it's placed at. Yeah, you I work know, right down there. Yeah, so yeah. tourists and people is just overcrowded, and it's a danger. It's a it's a it's a hazard. You know, yeah. cars are flying through, and people are spilling onto the streets. Yeah, constantly. I know. So um, maybe they should just barricade it. I don't know. Do something. You know, they don't have to remove. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't think they have to remove something so iconic. You know, charge money um, to touch it. Charge money to touch it. <laughs> How many tourists would you know go out down Still there? pay, yeah. Yeah, hey, ten dollars. But Take then you picture. got guys charging admission all over the place. That's an extra amount of traffic. You yep. see the guys like obviously doing the Statue of Liberty tours and stuff. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You know, get, a bunch, get a bunch of the same guys around those the bull balls charging five. The bull balls. Touch the balls. <laughs> charging five dollars. Touch the balls. Touch the balls. Forty bucks. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, speaking of the L train, I'll just cover one local topic, oh, yeah. and then we'll do our, move into our round of chirps. The L train, I know, Ian, you're effect- you will be affected by this when it shuts down oh, yes, uh, sir. next year in April. Well, Governor Cuomo, uh, this Thursday night, um, will go down into the tunnel to with a group of inspectors to, uh, to make sure that, uh, uh, that, you know, shutting down completely the L train is the right thing to do. Hmm. So uh, this Thursday, he's going down into the tunnel. What, what's the the, the idea inspector. here? Like, shut well, down part of it? But well, it just right. It's either Manhattan, part of like, it or maybe it doesn't have to happen uh, at all. You know, okay. so uh, that's his thing. So he's going down to, okay. uh, you know, with a group of people to, to ensure that, you know, let's see. Maybe shutdown's coming. Maybe not. I don't know. It's interesting that he actually has to go down there. Does well, he really? Who, who's in charge? There's a battle between the, the mayor and the, uh, the, 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 governor. the governor. Who's in charge? Yeah. I, I think the, the governor definitely yeah. holds more sway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So he's going down on Thursday. So we'll see what he comes back up <laughs> with from this tunnel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. With that, do you have anything you want to mention, uh, Ian, before we go into our round of chirps? Well, I guess, you know, I forgot the name, and this is a little morbid, but in Texas, there was just a, uh, a case that was decided of a gentleman from Baylor University. Baylor. And he uh, raped a woman 
And, uh, you know, she was found the next day and everything. And this case went down. He was the president of a frat. And he gets uh, a $400 fine and four months probation. That's it. That's it. And it, it was a what plea the hell deal. What was that about? I have no idea. The judge also was a graduate from Baylor. Mm. This is in Texas. This is a rape case. This woman, you know, had this uh, extraordinarily emotional testimony in front of the judge saying, like, I could have died. You know, I woke up choking on my vomit. Where was I? And and, and this this kid, you know, this like four hundred dollar fine and, and a four, few months probation, no jail time. Hmm. Now imagine if you're and he's a he's the head of a president of a frat, someone from you know is a little poor who has no money. Yeah, what happens to what them? What happens to them if yeah. they you know are accused of raping someone? Decades in jail. Yeah, this guy it, doesn't even go to jail. It's crazy. So I'm gonna find yeah. I'm gonna I don't remember his name on spot, but I'll pick it up again. Let's pick it up. Let's call him out. Why not? Oh, I'd let's, love to call this let's, motherfucker out. Let's chirp <laughs> let's, let's right. his name out <laughs> on the air. <laughs> oh, no, no. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, this, rape is not good. That's totally not, 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 not good at all. You know, Four months and, and four months. dollars fine? Yeah. Not cool. Oh, not yeah. cool. Uh, I, wonder, okay. I wonder what would happen if it was here in New York, in New York City. You know? Hey, Frank. What's up, Frank? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's Jacob Walter Anderson. There we go. You got it Frank right there. Up. So this just happened today. Uh, it's not the first time that's happened in the college. Or in the I know. I know. It's, it's not terrible, the first though. time. That, and the judge, the judge who presided is a Baylor graduate. This guy went to Baylor. It's, Unbelievable. Yeah. This pretty white boy. He get away. Get away with, with everything. They, well, yeah. Yeah. It's Privilege. Cool. Privilege. Huh. Four counts of sex assault. Four. And, and he doesn't go to jail. Four hundred dollar fine. And a few months probation. Well, I wonder, will this uh, case be appealed, do you think? I have no idea. Hmm. Makes you wonder. Appeal what? Yeah, I don't know. He's not going to He's not going to. They got away with nothing. They got away with yeah. nothing. It was a plea deal. That was a plea oh, deal. Oh, really? Yeah. And it, the the lawyer who defended the uh, victim, you know, she, she commented saying, this is, you know, this is terrible. How could they make this decision? But she was also behind negotiating this plea deal. Ah, and she had you recently lost a case beforehand. So maybe... Yeah. She was trying to keep her uh, hmm. record. I don't know. Now, now, it, now I'm questioning this. You know, it's terrible, man. It's terrible. Yeah. All right. Well, it is what it is. All right, folks. That was our local topics. Hope you enjoyed it. Now I think it's about the time to liven up the show. What do you say, Ian? Yep, 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 yep. All right, folks. These comments you're about to hear are real comments from real New Yorkers. Your mothers, your brothers, your sex partners, your train conductors, your Ian Bambergers. Jade, give us some of that tune. <laughs> also, folks, if you'd like to call in with your chirps, your New York moments, or opinions, call... 646-690-2976 with Daddy Ian Bambinger. Take it away. All right, so the first trip of the night, this is Enrique from the Bronx. And Enrique says this. Our building's laundry room is in a cellar where you walk outside down a pair of wooden stairs into a dark cellar. <laughs> <laughs> my life kind of flashes before my eyes every time. When I keep doing laundry late at night, I just don't know anymore. Hmm, that's 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 New York. Yeah, that's New York for you. What the hell is yeah. going on with this? Uh, where, 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 where borough is this person from? The, yeah, what borough? Please call us, Enrique. Enrique. What borough? No borough? He just says the Bronx. Mm, Bronx. You know, what All part right, of the Bronx? Well, yeah, you got to leave your apartment, go into this, some kind of basement and walk to stairs. get to the laundry. Obviously, it's not a condo. It's not a, you know, it's not a white glove building. (laughs) Makes you think. Well, thanks for that chirp. Uh, Who's it? Enrique. Enrique, thanks for that chirp. Keep them coming at chirpaboutit.com. All right, Gabe, what do you have to chirp about? This is Simpson from Chelsea. The only job benefit most New Yorkers want is an after-tax wage, which is four times the rent on a three- to four-bedroom apartment in the city. Let's push for that, folks. Hmm. What's your take on that? Job benefit. She lives in Chelsea. <laughs> okay, it's already expensive. As hell. This is really expensive. You know, it's like million dollar apartments over there. What is she talking about? After tax rent. The only job benefit most New Yorkers want is an after tax wage, which is four times the rent on a three to four bedroom. Hmm. So Jesus. Wants- well, you know what? The rich wants break too. You know. <laughs> yeah, say Moses, but like, goddamn. <laughs> I think that's what it is. For that. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Everybody wants a break here in this city. Everybody. How many bedrooms <laughs> did she say? Three to four. Three to four. The... Yeah. Three That's to four crazy. bedroom and 
Chelsea? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <second. laughs> I'm sorry. One better Mrs. Over a million. All right, dollars. I got a chirp here. Uh, I got a chirp here from Jim, who's from Flushing Queens. That's and Jim, uh, chirp. I realize that it's a good time to practice Zen during Subway Halt. Try it, it really works. Okay, I get that. During Subway Halt. Yeah. Like, I guess I just. Whenever the train breaks down, you break down and take it home to meditate. Instead of going crazy, instead of acting like yeah. a maniac, like a, a crazy New Yorker, just you want to go hear something zen. crazy. Go zen. How about yeah. smelly people on a train <laughs> in the summertime on the L when it breaks down? Right. And I had to sit in this train for two hours. Oh, no air conditioning. Oh, Jesus right? Christ! And then people just get angry. Smelly people, like just from a day of work, or homeless there's, folks. There's a homeless folk on the train. Yeah. You know, whatever, man. I'm not judging you for your smell. I'm just saying it does get pungent. You yeah. know, after a little time, <laughs> and then you're hours. stuck on the train. For two hours. I'm not saying it was all day, but like I was down there for a long time, and it was already oh a hot God. day. We had some hot days this summer. That's abuse, man. Yeah, I That's still haven't had abuse. anything like that. <laughs> yeah, dude. You <laughs> two hours down sweat. there. That's terrible. That's you feel the sweat. Feel the sweat. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious, man. It's not like it's like I'm a little wet and sweaty. Yeah. Like, no, 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 no. Breathe it in. Yeah. And then it dries. You can man. breathe it like, in. No, what is this? Oh, oh my god, I love it. It's terrible. All right, what do you have to chirp about, Ian? <laughs> uh, this is Eddie from Lower East Side. Eddie has to say this: the streets of New York will never fail to amaze you. Mm. Every street, every corner has its own beauty, and even when you walk on the same street, every time you get a different vibe. Mm. Hashtag positive and energetic. Hashtag I love New York. Eddie, what's up, man? I that's love awesome. it. Great chirp. I love it. Wow. So that's a positive chirp. Every step awesome. of the way, New yep. York City is just, uh, you just, just discover something great about New York City. As soon yeah, as you man. move here. That's why it's great. Yeah. Yeah. All the right, chirp. I, I love that chirp, Eddie. That's a great one. That's huh? a good one. Every step of the way. Yeah, I still feel that. I've only been here for a little more than a year, so I'm really still getting into every little story. Oh, I love it. Well, we're going to hear you chirp about it in the second half of the show. Yeah, Can't exactly. wait. All right. right, with that, what do you have to chirp about? This is Nicole from the West Village. She says, Tis the season to go as far away from NYC as possible. <laughs> Hashtag SantaCon. Hashtag <laughs> overcrowded city. Totally crazy around here. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, SantaCon was just this past weekend on right. Saturday. Yeah, Anybody, anyone here participate? I used to, but... Well, you let's know. look at Jade here with the Santa co- with the Santa hat. Did you, Were you do part it, of the, the Santa Con this past? Accidentally. Accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> How does that happen? You're like, oh shit, I'm drinking. I had a, I had a gig in Jersey, and then I came back in the middle of it. Yeah. Wendy's. Oh wow. Yeah, All right. Where it was well, Santa Com is okay. crazy, yeah. man. You know, but it's actually interesting to see all these Santas all over the city. They're all over every part of the city. There's a group of Santas just, you know, singing Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so the last time I did it, which was three years ago, I remember this because yeah. my friend, uh, you know, he, he's a what is uh, a stalwart, stubborn person, right? Stalwart mm-hmm. and stubborn, sure. great combo. Right, and we started very early in the day. He's dressed up in his, uh, you know, red jeans. Yeah. And he has, uh, you know, the, whatever you call the it, like, antlers. antlers. Yes, he has mm. antlers on. And he paste, pasted this red nose on, yeah. his, on his thing. <laughs> was it's it glowing? Like Eight o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't glowing. <laughs> and bouncers are like, you know, after a certain time, we don't allow people dressed in here. And he I, loses his shit, man. He, he's like, get the hell out of here. You're letting me inside this bar. And like. Oh okay. wow! This is it. Like, this well, is, you know, I this think is what Santa Con is. Th- this you know? year, yeah. they allowed him to to uh, uh, enter bars up to four in the morning. Yeah. Uh, anyone dressed like that? Yep. Yeah. This year, yeah. Is four that like a morning. law passed? Like you can't. Uh, I don't know what happened. Santa uh, but well, all the yeah. laws that need to be passed. Santa. Yeah, I mean, it was it was <laughs> eight, it was eight o'clock, nine o'clock. You know, groups of people just entering bars online. You know, yeah. all over. Yep. Okay, so when I last did it, I was not allowed. Yeah, well, I guess I guess it. they've improved. They get yeah. a bad rep, though, man. These, these guys, mm, yeah, not good. It's hardcore no. drinking all day. They get <laughs> all day. They get pretty nasty. Well, you know, for yeah. that, who's the chirper, by the way, Gabe? This is Nicole from the West Village. Well, Nicole, I, I feel your pain. It gets bad down there. I'm sure. I feel your pain. And then yeah. you have not only Santa Con, you have people shopping all over the place. It's, of course, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a crazy time of the year. You know, it's by Saks Fifth Avenue. Folks, if you did, if you haven't been, you should check it out. I mean, it's really beautiful. The Saks Fifth Avenue mm-hmm. building, man, what a display! Really? Oh, um, yeah, awesome, awesome. But just be prepared to uh, uh, for the crowd. It's yeah. really, really crowded. But right. nice though. Yeah, nice. All right, with that, Ian, what do you have? We'll do one more round of chirps, and then we'll take a oh, break. Yeah. By Mr. Ian Bamberger. This is uh, Watt from Harlem. 
And Watt has to say this. Just walked past a morning transit paper vendor cranking the Charlie Brown theme song on his boombox <laughs> and wishing people a good day. Oh, man, that's cool. What the hell is he on? Oh, come on, Watt. I think like a positive vibe. Yeah? He's on positivity and like high on life. A boombox. Nothing else. Well, what's that uh, theme song? Charlie Brown. How Peanuts. did that go? The oh, peanut, yeah. yeah. How did that go, Ian? How you know, Man, how know it? <laughs> do you know? <laughs> do you know it? <laughs> it's like, uh, how does it go? It's, no, yeah, I can't, I can't even think. I'm of how thinking like, yeah. Yeah, for some reason, I'm thinking about Mr. Softy in my head. For some reason, <laughs> is it the same? Do they play it for all the and same specials, winter. like Thanksgiving? Yeah. Well, I think Jay just pulled it off. I'm thinking got of Doug. <laughs> this is the Charlie Brown theme song there that's it, it. Yeah. so the guy was playing that on a boomba I take that yeah I like that that's cool Why not? every that morning that, that's an awesome alarm I is, like is that. that every morning he plays it I don't know no he just this past day uh, what do you got a problem with that <laughs> <laughs> one time you're like I hate that song I take that alright Actually, why don't we complete our chirps for this uh, song? What do you say? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Who's the chirper, by the way? That's Watt. All right, Watt. Well, thanks for that chirp. Uh, that's a real positive one. I like it's it. A hell of a name. A lot of energy. Yeah. All I'm right, all right, Gabe. You have one more chirp before we take a break? Sure, sure. Uh, let's see. Let's do uh, Brian from Bed Stuy. All right. Oh, my hometown. The decorations at Columbus Circle are my favorite. So when a friend suggests we meet up there for a stand and look at girlfriend day date. It was an empathetic yes for me. <laughs> so he took his girlfriend there for the to see the I decorations. The decorations, yeah. Hey, again, the city's beautiful. It's gorgeous this time of the year. Yeah. All right, I get it. Yeah. All right. You cool. know, every cross street in Best Eye off Nostrand, at least where I live, they have these beautiful lights and yeah. decorations. There, so mm-hmm. really, it's cool. I dig right. it. People I'll get like into it. it. You know what? This this theme song has got me in a real joyful mood now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that paper guy in the morning. <laughs> It's cool. That's legit. That's good. All right. Do we have any more chirps or that's it? Yeah, we have I mean, one more. I have another one. Uh, this is Herrera from Coney Island. Herrera says this. A man just offered me his seat on a crowded D train. Hashtag one. Hashtag that never happens. Hashtag man digging syphilis. Hashtag <laughs> nose next to me. Maybe that's why. Oh, okay. So the man is... Digging up his nose. Oh, dig! Yeah. That she. I see. So the guy who was sitting there got up, offered the lady. Oh, I said syphilis. You know his seat. I said syphilis. I'm sorry. Digging up his syphilis. nose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sorry, I was like digging syphilis because. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I don't have my glasses on. What did you mean to say? Oh, I'm sorry. It made him digging up his nose. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, I yeah, get it. I'm sorry. I, I get it. I, let me say it again. A man offered me a seat on a crowded D train. Hashtag one. Hashtag that never happens. Hashtag man digging up his <laughs> nose next to me on the train. And that's why. And that's, that's a why. big hashtag. Got it. That's, Ooh, big hashtag. that's a it's real syphilis. big hashtag. Like, ignore the syphilis. Next okay. <laughs> <laughs> like well, maybe he had syphilis like. as well. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, he definitely has syphilis. Yeah, you know? Yeah. All right, well, that's actually... All right, I get it. So the, he gave up the seat because he's like, you deal with it, not me. <laughs> right, right. All right, well, that's fun. Actually, I like this tune, but we're going to hear a better one by Mr. Ian Bamberger. All, all right. right, folks, that was our round of chirps. Hope you enjoyed. We're having a great time here on the show, Chirp About It Live. Also, if you'd like to hear your chirp live on the show, become a celebrity for a few seconds. Go on to chirpaboutit.com and share your New York moments, thoughts, your opinions. We'd love to hear from you. With that, we're going to leave it up to Mr. Ian Bamberger. To carry on. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, so, so far, it's been a killer show. Um, before I play my song, i got to give a shout-out to Gabe. Outstanding Thanks, comedian. Um, this Thursday and Friday, I'll be back at an Artist Creators Collection at Wild Embeddings and the Platform. Nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a cool venue. It's a cool venue. Both, both of them are cool. Um, yeah. Being a part of that, Gabe was once, I think you were what, the... Uh, the head honcho, like the... The MC, I did the one MC time and the then yeah, 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 just uh, performed the other press. time. But you know that that first time that I did it, they were supposed to have me just do 15 minutes. And but you rocked it. You but rocked they didn't it. know, like, because I was the only comic on there. They yeah. weren't really used to, like, giving someone the light, which you do at a comedy show. Right, right. Let them know they have a couple minutes left and get off stage. So I just did, like, 30 minutes and oh, I had, wow. they had no idea how to get me off there. <laughs> Finally, they were just like... You have to go off the stage. You, double, you doubled your time. <laughs> I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> All right. It was fun. It was a good time. All right. And 
uh, a creator's collection. That's where we met and uh, rock yeah. on. This song is called Danger on the Horizon. I wrote this about Scott Whalen. Uh, this is on my last EP, Till the Morning Comes. Check it out on Spotify. Check it out on iTunes Music. All that social media shit. Okay, here we go. Ian Bamberger, folks. Chirp about it live. Yeah. Danger up on the horizon, casting a shadow all over me. Stranger, are you listening? Have you heard my voice before? Will you take me through that door? But wait, but what is this? A road to larger dreams. I will find my way Tomorrow or today Singing my song for you If you want me to Danger Yeah I'll sing my song for you Danger If you want me to Voices that are here in time. This chapter's almost over. Characters seem to fill the void, but I cannot understand which way I will go. But wait, what is this? A road to larger dreams. I will find. For today, singing my song for you. If you want me to, danger, I'll sing my song for you, danger. If you want me to, danger, I'll sing my song for you. song for you if you want me to danger yeah i'll sing my song for you danger if you want me to danger i'll sing my song for you Ian Bamberger, folks. Ian Bamberger. With that, we have a call. All right. I want to take a short break. We'll be right back. Yep. Yo, yo. Lemo, and why should I? Hi, folks. This is Ed Lemo. Who is Ed Lemo, and why should I listen? Ed Lemo is an attorney that is unique in that he gives consumers good, solid information about the law that will help protect them against irresponsible drivers, landowners, and doctors and hospitals who are negligent and cause you harm. Ed Lemo has been representing individuals against insurance companies since 1984. Ed Lemo limits his practice to accident, injury, and medical malpractice claims. You can find out more about me at my website at www.lemolaw.com. That's www.lemolaw.com. Or you can reach me at 646-522-9082. So if you're injured in an accident or a victim of malpractice and you need a trial attorney who has experience in the courtroom and gets results, 
Call Ed Lemo at 646-522-9082, or you can reach me at edwardlemo at yahoo.com. Or you can go to my website for further information, www.lemolaw.com. You'll be glad you did. Thank you. All right, uh, Ed Lemo, great personal injury attorney. All right, so please check him out. All right, he's really super duper. EdLemo.com, please check him out. Also, this show is brought to you by uh, Chirpin' Chickens, ChirpinChickens.com. So please go on to their website, download their app for a huge discount. All right, uh, just mention the show, Chirp About It Live. Uh, we're also sponsored by Accordia Shipping for all of your shipping needs. All right, go on to AccordiaShipping.com. All right, from a pencil to a car to containers, they will ship them for you. Papa John's for tonight's dinner. Go on to PapaJohns.com, download their app, mention the show, chirp about it live. All right, with that uh, that great intro we just heard, or I, should, I shouldn't say intro, that lovely song it's by Mr. Ian Bamberg, uh, my so younger much, little man. brother. Man, that was great. Huh? Yeah, yeah, Danger on the Horizon. I don't think I've ever heard that one. First time I played it on this Beautiful. show, but yeah, I released it on my last TP till the morning comes. Check it out on Spotify, uh, all the great musical streaming services you could possibly think of. Super, super, it's, it's all over. I yeah, love yeah. it. Cool, I love it. All right, well, you know the the uh, the, the panel has just grown. We have Mr. Gene Sideman, my good friend Gene Sideman, art dealer. What's up, Gene? City. Hello. Well, Nice to be back. Oh, I was, yeah. I was in the neighborhood. I thought, hey. Why not stop see, in, huh? You bet. I, can, I know it. I can report uh, right back from uh, Art Basel That's in right. Miami. Well, so. you called in last week. You were there in Miami. Uh, tell us, what was that like? Well, my, it's the biggest art fair in North America mm -hmm. annually. And everybody goes from the biggest collectors in the world and gallerists to people who are complete wannabes partiers it's that fabulous um panoply of life yeah. of all sorts uh funny funny scene we're at the fama hotel this so the delano used to be like the epicenter of fab now fama f-a-e-m-a -E is the center of what's up not fema because that's Bad. I think it's pronounced <laughs> FEMA. It's not FEMA. FEMA hasn't house. gotten there. If there's a hurricane, <laughs> FEMA will meet FEMA. <laughs> FINA. FINA. <laughs> anyway, so it's it's north of the Delano, like 21st and Collins. Anyway, um, it the temperature dipped to about 56 degrees. Oh, God. <laughs> and as it dipped, the scantily clad folk were freezing. Right at seventy-two, scanty is cool. At fifty-six, scanty is freezing, yeah. especially if you're from the north. Right. Anyway, so um, in in very high heels, and the whole scene sort of changed. And it was, I was just there. I was a little chilly. I was nippy, but I wasn't <laughs> scantily clad. You know. <laughs> anyway, it was it was a lot of fun. Well, good. Well, and the back. art. But and by the way, the art, the convention center. They just spent six hundred. And fifteen million dollars, and to make it look like a New York, uh, like a Soho mm. uh, wow. art gallery, wow. and they, it looks great, it feels great. The, the, uh, when I'm not looking at art, I'm in the collector's lounge. That was great. Uh, the perfect combination of elegance, uppityness, entitlement, and love of art. I love it. I love it, huh? Ooh, well described, huh? Right there. <laughs> Isn't that? <laughs> yeah. Brought to you in part by Illy Cafe. Illy Cafe. Yeah, Did you go for that drink? Uh, in fact, uh, you know, my guest last week, uh, 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 Greg Lefebvre. Yeah. He uh, he uh, invited you out to, to get a drink on him. Yes. Did you go? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, here's the, here's the issue. Here's the issue uh, in Miami Beach. So basically you have Miami Beach and then you have Miami Mm -hmm. And there's a few ways you can get a, you, know, you go across on bridges unless you swim. Nobody swims. Mm -hmm. So um, it takes a long time. There's a lot of traffic. Right? So um, you, you just got to be, you have to really enjoy where you are. Mm -hmm. You can't get all uptight. Uh, Uber and, li by the way, Lyft is about half the price of Uber. Oh, right? all right. Well, you, you look for, an, everyone says, I'm going to take an Uber. And then it's like $47. You know, it's like mega 
Uber. It's like Uber Surge. It's, it should be called Uber Surge. All right. Well, I'll be waiting on that check from Lyft. For, you know, thank you for advertising <laughs> right, on the show. Lyft, <laughs> Lyft was half <laughs> half price. So. Half price. All right. I certainly will reach out to them. No question. All right, folks. That's uh, Mr. Gene Seidman, a very dear friend of mine. And he also actually uh, brought a lovely young lady with him as well. Why don't you say hello, please? Of course. Hi. Welcome. My name is Barbara Ann Michaels. Tell us about yourself. Barbara. I am a, I'm an artist. I'm a performance artist. And I make audience interactive artwork about love, which means mm. I'm going to create a situation, a performance in which you're going to express yourself and you're going to feel seen and heard and celebrated and adored and loved. Ooh, I like that. I know. Everybody wants that. That's an entire yeah. episode. <laughs> promise you'll be back next week. I promise. Right. Well, Let's the reason do I do that is when people feel seen, heard, and celebrated, that's when you want the world to be better for everybody. And Absolutely. if someone doesn't feel seen or heard or celebrated, that's when you want to. That's when people hurt themselves or each other. And who needs that? Yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah. So I'm also an, an interfaith minister, and I've officiated over 450 weddings, Ooh. which means I have interviewed... 900 people in love. In love. In love. 900 people in love talking to me about what's partnership, what does it mean to be, why do I love this person, why do I feel at home here, why do I want to say yes to this? That's interesting. I had an interfaith marriage. Uh, I had a rabbi and a priest there. Uh -huh. You know, it, it was a mix, and I had to, we talked to both, my wife and I. It's cool. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, happily married for... I guess three months now. Three months. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. So it's stepping into the waters now. Just Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so, sweet question. You've been married for three months, but what first attracted you to your sweetheart when you first met? Oh, man. I, okay. So, I'll just say it's got a little, little, uh, Past a V and Bamberger, so I went to Rutgers <laughs> University <laughs> as a as a younger man, and I was on the crew team rowing, which is an amazing thing. And rowing actually brought me to like a better place in my life, and you know everything I learned. And I met Cat, who's my wife now. If you're listening, she probably is. Shout out to my <laughs> wife. <laughs> Hello, Cat. Uh, we yeah, love you, Cat. I, I love you, Cat. Yeah, I met her. She was the captain of the crew team, and I just loved everything about it. And what she did was bring out like the goofiest, craziest stuff in me. Mm. And I'm like, I just want her to notice me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Something like that. And, uh, you know, that's how it started. Uh, everything that we developed, how we met each other was through like this, this hard work, camaraderie and dedication to a specific craft. And then we learned more about how we respect our family because we're very family oriented and, you know, you know, the way we love animals as well. We're very big dog fans. I'm a dog walker. Yeah. Not yeah. full time, but I, you know, because music is my thing. Yeah, but thing. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's so that's, funny. it's, it's. Yeah, it's an ever going story. But, you know, I'm. How did you propose? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, so she knew Ooh. it was. Yeah, I want to get into the Gabe's yeah, well, as well, well. So I'm going to quickly. Well, I met your wife. She's, she's excellent. She's, she's, she's excellent. Really cool. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, but the quick the proposal thing was we love sushi, she loves chocolate. What I did was uh, pick her up from the ferry because at that time she was living in the city. I was still living at home before I moved into the city. I'll make this super fast. <laughs> and. Uh, Went to this, you know, apartment um, that were Airbnb'd on the Highlands. And the Highlands in New Jersey, right across, you could see the, the Hudson Bay. You could see New York City from there. It's magnificent. We ordered our favorite sushi meal. Um, and I also bought a box of homemade fudge. And in the middle of it, beneath all the chocolate, was this box. And inside that box was the... The ring, the mm. engagement ring. Nice. And, you know, we ate dinner together, and I dressed up all nice, and she starts just getting so nervous, like, we don't have to have dessert yet. We don't have to have dessert yet. <laughs> I'm like, why? I just want to, you know, let's just eat some of this chocolate. And I open it up, and there's that little thing in the center, which is where the, the ring the is. Ring. Mm. And I'm like, let's just have a few pieces of chocolate. <laughs> <And> she's like, <laughs> 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 but Finally, we don't even eat most of the chocolate. And then, I, you know, I get down on one knee, and I propose. And she said yes. But, yeah, so Beautiful. sushi, fudge. Marriage. I love it. By the way, so if she it. said no, he wouldn't be telling the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You're right. <laughs> yeah, oh, boy. Was, you know, every, it, was, it was nice. And, you know, I got her parents' permission. I feel like that's something that some people say is archaic. I did it. You know, I asked for her hand. And yeah, uh, that's yeah. it. I love it. Yeah, She's so a lovely you person. Said you asked her parents' permission. <laughs> so it used to be you would ask her father. Her father. Right. And you said you asked her parents. I so did. that's like an upgrade. On Tonight? the old archaic, no, it was okay. archaic. Only the father, okay, because oh, yes. in I a patrimonial, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The mother needs 
She, right. Yeah, I needed her permission. Convincing as well. As well. <laughs> <laughs> so, so bravo. <laughs> bravo to you for upgrading that program. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Bravo, huh? Yeah, there clap. Yeah. There you go. Oh. <laughs> All right, we also have another gentleman in the house. Can't leave you behind. Gabe. Gabe Stoddard, comedian, stand-up com comedian. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, I have a man. question for you, sure. Gabe. Yeah. How many nipples do you have? Oh, nice. You saw, <laughs> you saw my, uh, <laughs> my YouTube tape. That's yeah, let's talk I, about that. I, I thought that was hilarious. Thanks, man. Yeah. Yeah, I have two nipples, as most people do. Uh-huh. Uh, oh, okay. So tell us about YouTube, the story. This sounds bizarre, but that's <laughs> used to be my opener for a while, and I... Uh, Use that tape to get into a couple, to get into my first comedy festival this year. So they like the nipple joke too, I guess, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, tell us about the nipple joke. I mean, you admit it was school. Yeah. And then there was uh, when I was like 11 years old, and a couple of my friends thought it'd be really funny to start a rumor about me that I had one nipple. They just thought it was the funniest thing they could think of. <laughs> so they told everyone in the school, and it got to a point where everyone knew. That's how they knew me, as the kid with one nipple. <laughs> oh, no. And uh, one time I had to give, like, a presentation in class in front of the whole, you know, like, 30 kids. And it was so boring that the uh, teacher had to, like, encourage everyone to ask questions. She was like, oh, does anyone have any questions for Gabe? This one girl was like, yeah. How many nipples do you have? <laughs> like, in front of the whole class. And I was, like, so embarrassed, but I had to look at the teacher and be like, is this kind of inappropriate? And the teacher was like, Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what I used my opener for a couple of years. I love it. Thanks, man. <laughs> There's another joke. Tell us about your uh, phone interview. The phone interview? Yeah. Oh, with the uh, the sperm bank. With the sperm bank, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Um, I do my homework, Gabe, Gabe. Yeah, thanks for watching the tape. That's yeah. uh, one more view. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> On YouTube. <laughs> the, uh, I, when I first moved here, there, I didn't have any work. Right. And I applied to be a sperm donor at one of the banks. It was actually... Um, was that Chase or a city? <laughs> it's just Capital One, and uh, there's no f there's no initial fee. So I just went in, and uh, it was actually a crowd bank in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where I first applied, and they called me back when I was finally living here. And you have to go through like a phone interview after you finish the paperwork. And the guy that I was talking to he was like acted like I'd never masturbated before in my life. He was like, "Oh, you think you're just gonna come in here and like you know what you're doing?" He's like, "You're not a professional, okay?" He was like trying to talk me down. And I was like, "All right, look, this is the one job I know I'm qualified for. You're like, qualified you don't need to <laughs> belittle my experience like this. Like, please." But um, you know, I didn't. I didn't do it. I was too insulted. Even though it was you didn't do it, no, I never did it. I was like, <laughs> "Fuck this guy." I'm not gonna. Sorry, I don't know if I can curse. No, of but. course, you, of course you can. You know, the, about the it. biggest bank uh, I know that does that is Siemens Bank. Siemens. Siemens. There we go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you got your degree in master. Not yeah, master, a master's, master's in Bayesian. Yeah, Bayesian. The master's in Bayesian. <laughs> Sorry, master's in fine Bayesians. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us about well, where have you been uh, performing? Any, so, any any place uh, recently? Yeah, I'm uh, been here for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, from where? B Boston? From Boston, yeah. Boston, yeah. Moved there. No accent. No accent. No, my father has a little bit more. Um, Can you put it on if you need to? Sure. Yeah. Let's hear it. You want it? Jump about. What should I say besides wicked, like the the wicked, classic thing? Wicked pissed. Yeah, wicked <laughs> pissed. Yeah, that's the only really way to say it. No, you say wicked pissa. That's what you say. Oh, wicked pissa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh man. Yeah, they say all kinds of words in Boston. So, I mean, whatever you guys want me to say. Like, be like Mark Wahlberg or some shit. Oh, where he told everyone that he was going to stop the plane from going <laughs> into the building? Yeah, right. You hear about that? Uh, no, I didn't. I Tell me. Tell Mark Wahlberg like, had an interview uh, in 2002 or something. He was like, if I was on that plane, he's like, it wouldn't hit those buildings. And everyone's like, what? <laughs> he's like, I'm Mocky Mock. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Calm down, Mark. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, he's uh, a real weirdo. Maki Mac. Maki Mac, yeah. Yeah. Dorchester. <laughs> he's, uh. Speaking of sperm, you guys ever see Ted, the movie? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Is that Ted. the big teddy bear? See, the Ted the talking Ted teddy bear. You guys ever see that movie? No, yeah. yeah, I know Ted, the conference. Ted X. Oh, Ted right. Ted X. Yeah, Ted X. I'm sure Mark Warbucks in one of those. <laughs> he, uh. He's famous in Boston for, you know, assaulting a Vietnamese dude. At like, 16, beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And, you know, 
people don't talk about that anymore, but like no. he was, <laughs> he beat up a dude with like a brick. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then he was Marky Mark after that and sold underwear. Calvin Klein bought him, bought him a deal after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, no, no Marky Mark jokes actually. Just All right, tell us a good one. I'd like to hear one. A good joke from you? Yes. Um. Well, you already saw the video, right? I saw the video. You yeah. watched the whole thing. Or you just saw those two jokes because uh, that's the first yeah, two. I saw so the you could have stopped right yeah. after that. Yeah, <laughs> could have stopped after a two, minute. Um. Yeah, maybe there's a third one. I don't recall it, but um. Well, this isn't so much a joke, but this is uh, something I noticed in the past couple of years. Yeah. Now that my nephew, he's he's eight years old. My brother lives in California, but he, he comes to visit me once in a while. And, you know, young kids they all have their cell phones and everything, even at that age. But he wa- he still watches Sesame Street, you know, like I used to. But he watches it on his phone, and it's on HBO. Like, they're not on PBS anymore. And uh, Kermit is dating a different pig. Hmm. He, like, left Miss Piggy, you guys know. Right. But the classic relationship, right? And my nephew doesn't know this isn't his first pig. Like, he has no <laughs> idea <laughs> that he's used to be. <laughs> this is his thing. He's a frog. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's a trend now. And so he left Miss Piggy for this brown-haired pig named Denise. And uh, it's just, you know, Kermit and Miss Piggy were the first interracial couple I ever saw on <laughs> television. And uh, if you look <laughs> at a picture of Denise, she's, like, kind of Asian for whatever reason. Like, you'd think a frog and a pig was already yeah. different enough, but they <laughs> made her... <laughs> made her Asian. Yeah. I'm Asian. And actually, a, a guy told me the other day that... Uh, he grew up in Pakistan and they weren't allowed to play Sesame Street because Miss Piggy is a pig. <coughs> oh. Like, on Muslim television, they're not allowed to have a talking pig. What about, what about, was it's the against cook. pork? Was the Cookie <laughs> Monster gay? <laughs> or, or who no, was, it was, who? uh, Bert, Bert and Bert Ernie. Ernie. Bert and Ernie. Ernie. Yeah. Bert and Ernie. Good for them. I feel like the Cookie well, now Monster. They're, they're officially gay. They're out now. Right. They're out yeah. now. Well, they're on HBO, so they can yeah. do whatever they want, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was younger, they like asked Kermit like why he liked pigs so much, and he was like, "Oh, he's like, I guess I just like their curly tails." <laughs> I was like, "You definitely can't say that on public television, right? <laughs> this is on PBS." But now they're on HBO. Watch if they ask him the same question, he's gonna be like, "That ass. That's what I like." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the one. Um, yeah. What is, what else do you guys well, want to know about? Do people call you? Is your real name Gabriel? It is. Yeah. I have a son named Gabriel. Do you really? Yeah, we call him Gabe. Cool. Does he ever get made fun of? He, I think he likes his name a lot. Yeah? Gabriel. 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 Yeah. He's a cool name. Yeah. yeah. Do you, are you guys uh, Christians? Do you go to church or anything? No, I know that's an a- Gabriel. Yeah. It's an angel. But that's the only thing that my mom used to tell me. It was like, it's named after the angel. You should be uh. proud of that. But it was like... And have you aligned your behavior accordingly? Not at all. I... I don't know. I only go to church once a year, so. <laughs> what, what's coming up, huh? Uh, it's on Christmas Eve. Oh. You're just yeah. packing a lot of angelic behavior into one night. Yeah. Yeah, I sing on Christmas Eve, and that's about as much Christianity as I can handle. But my, uh, one of my friends just got baptized for his girlfriend, and he's like the same age as me. He's like 26. And you know, I've known it since we were like 10 years old, and now he's going to change his whole life for this girl. But, uh, but he told me that they did it at the Y, <laughs> oh god! And I was like, "Oh, that's kind of better. Like, if you're gonna get baptized that late, might as well like, be recreational, right? <laughs> <laughs> might as well, might as well be a good workout. Yeah, you can just go play basketball or something. Is that, a, is that right. a spiritual workout? I mean, you're already in the gym. They like bring out the tank. You get dunked, and then you go into the pool. I don't know what you do after. You're already there. <laughs> He's already got a membership to the Y. Like, might as well be a Christian, right? Hey, whatever, man. I don't know. Whatever floats your... Uh, but your son's uh, name. Yeah, Gabe. How did you come up with it? Uh, w- I just liked it. We just liked the yeah. name Gabe. The, uh, his brother's name is Julian. Julian? Julian and Gabrielle. Yeah. yeah. Jules and Gabe. Yeah. Jules and Gabe. That's, that's cool. That's a good, good combo. Jules and Gabe. I like that. Yeah. Sounds like... I don't know. What does it sound so like? I, uh, I had a, it was my birthday just the other day. Oh, happy Sunday. birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yesterday? Yesterday? And uh, Sunday. Sunday. Anyway, a friend Happy of mine. Happy birthday uh, to you. A friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, a neighbor, uh, sent me a text and he said, Gene, I think you're going to really like this. Uh, so he sends, it, he sends it to me. And we used to live in Westport, Connecticut. And my son, Gabe, is friends with this writer. Mm-hmm. 
and the writer wrote this uh, end of year uh, piece on the 10 nicest people of the year. And number 10 was Gabe Seidman. And he talked about why he, Gabe was his, his, one of his favorite people and nicest people that he, when all the other kids are going out and he sometimes likes to hang back with the adults and right. get into conversation. And it was, and he just extolled his, his sweet nature. And as a father, uh, that's as great a birthday present. Uh, having your son be the uh, having the accolade of being so you know recognized as being just such a a warm nice person it's yeah th- it was uh that's really very nice. sweet it was a it was just a beautiful birthday can I, I ask love you that. something yeah is your son gay no oh, okay he's not <laughs> no he's he's heteronormative and androcentric <laughs> well all right how old is he and he's okay he, but by the way his pronouns are him his he okay fair he's twenty five. 25, okay, so we're almost the same age. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All well, right, uh, Jade, uh, just sing with me. Time flies when we're having fun. The show uh, has come to an end. That sucks. Oh, I know. Just, uh, we'll really? be back. You'll be back next this week. It's getting good. I know. Huh? It's just getting good. We have to extend it. I know Frank keeps saying, you know, but uh, eventually we will extend the show in the new year, no question about it. All right, folks, that was our episode of Chirp About It Live. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, please come back next week, same time, same place, cityworldradio.com, 8 p.m., Chirp About It Live. I'd like to thank the panel, Gene Seidman, Barbara, Gabe, my little brother, Ian Bamberger, Thanks. and Jay. Thank you all uh, for joining me. We'll be back. Yo, what's all going right. on? Y'all listening to Sky's Crescent Radio, and here's what's coming up. 